What's up guys? Today we're going to go over LRU cache. First, we'll look at the input and the output. So if you already know what an LRU cache is, you can just skip ahead. Then we'll look at the diagram. So I'm going to try explaining in a way that you remember it even months from now. And for the code, I'll be linking it down below. And finally, we'll go over the code complexity. What's an LRU cache? It's a cache with an eviction policy of least recently used. In other words, we know our cache has a finite size, and any time we want to make room for new entries, we have to pick which ones we're going to evict or kick out. In this case, we're going to kick out the least recently or oldest accessed entry. Let's look at an example. I've initialized our LRU cache with a capacity of two. So we can only have two entries at most. Our LRU cache is gonna support get and put in constant time complexity, similar to a hash map. When we call put for one comma one, we have a key value pair in our cache. We call put of two comma two, and we have another entry. When we call get of one, we return the corresponding value of one. Now I called put of three comma three. So we're gonna add an entry, but our LRU cache is already size two. That's why we evicted two comma two, because it was the least recently used, and we put three comma three instead. What happens when I call an entry that's no longer in the cache? We simply return negative one. I call put of four comma four. Again, we've reached the maximum capacity, so we're going to evict the oldest entry. Then we end up with four comma four and three comma three. Finally, we call get a few more times. If it's there in the cache, we return the value. Otherwise, we return negative one. Let's dig deeper. So we know in the LRU cache, we have put and get with constant time complexity. Normally, a hash map will be just fine but we also have to take care of capacity and keep track of which entry was used the oldest and the newest. For that, we're gonna go with the doubly linked list because we want to maintain our constant add and remove time complexity while also preserving order and capacity. Like I just said, a hash map is gonna be fine for key value pairs if we didn't have any constraints. So how are we gonna combine the hash map and the doubly linked list? We know that KV can be taken care of with a hash map so how do we put them both together? We put them both together by taking the key value pair and putting it in the node and then putting a reference from the hash map to the node. Great, so we put them both together. Now, how are we gonna keep track of which one's the oldest and the newest? 10, that all we're doing is adding things into our cache. So if we have K1, K2, K3, so on and so forth, we're gonna have corresponding nodes in the doubly linked list. Now we know that one side is oldest and one side is the newest. All we have to do is pick a side of the doubly linked list which is the oldest which is going to be where we remove nodes from and one side which is going to be the newest which is where we add new nodes or nodes that have been accessed most recently. This is the image that I want you guys to remember. We have our hash map at the top and references to our doubly linked list at the bottom. The most recently used is going to be towards the head and least recently used is gonna to be towards the tail. Now these are actually dummy nodes that are initialized when we initialize our LRU cache. You'll see what they look like in the dry run following. But the main idea is that anytime we add a node or access it, it's going to get put at the beginning, touching the head, and anytime we wanna remove something, it gets popped close to the tail. Initializing LRU of size two, the hash map is empty, but the doubly linked list has the head and the tail pointing to each other. Call put of k1v1. Now, k1 is in the hash map, but the value is a reference to the node. And here is where we actually store the k1v1. Notice how it's in between the head and the tail. Now I call put of k2v2. Here we have k1n1 and then k2n2, but the latest node is at the head, where the older node is more towards the tail. When I try putting a third entry, we reach our maximum size. So we have to kick out the least recently used. In this case, it's gonna be K1V1. And then we put K3V3 at the top to the head, and then we move the previous one to the tail. Finally, I call get of K2. The hash map doesn't change, but the nodes in the doubly linked list change order. So K2N2 goes to the head, and K3N3 goes to the tail. If we have to evict a node, this one is going to get evicted. The complexities are pretty straightforward here because they tell us. <laughs> so 
O1 is going to be the type complexity and the space complexity is going to be the size of the LRU cache when it was initialized. So that's how you solve LRU cache. If you like the video, please thumbs up. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe.